watching Candidates Corner. Welcome. This is Mark Lindy, and I am here with a brand new face to television here at Brockton Community Access. I have Jeff Thompson. Thompson. Yes. I almost blew it. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, 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 because you're a new face to me. I've heard about you. You're a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, correct? I am. Okay. And why are you running for City Council in Ward 5? I'm running for City Council because I raising my family here on, uh, uh, on the east side of Brockton. Um, I live there uh, on Ames Road, which is uh, off of Center Street on mm -hmm. the Abington-Brockton line. I'm there with my wife and our three girls. I also operate my law firm uh, here in Brockton. Okay. So I I'm invested in the future of Brockton. Um, I want Brockton to be a thriving community that's growing, that's safe, that's well run. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I'm running. I believe I have the, the, the character, the temperament, the experience to be an effective uh, ward counselor. So uh, that's essentially why I'm running. Zoning Board of Appeals is going to be one of the committees that it's thankless. It's, it's a lot of work. It is. Planning Board, Zoning Board. My dad served back in the day, had a five year term. I think he was traffic commission, I think he was Zoning Board too. He was so glad to get off when he was done. He only did one term. Okay, my dad was a, a public servant. He was director of parole for the Commonwealth, but he wanted to give something back to the community. But it's a lot of work. The hours are long. It's yes. not the least bit glamorous. No. So you a glutton for punishment want to go from the Zoning Board of Appeals to the City Council? Uh, I wouldn't say a glutton for punishment. I, a desire for service, mm -hmm. um, a desire to uh, use uh, the skill set and the experience that I believe I've gained over the years and uh, use that in a different forum. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, I enjoy. Um, I really didn't know much about plans or um, you know, development or anything like that. Um, but over the course of my time on the Zoning Board, I got to learn more and more. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I like to uh, uh, acquire information, uh, read the different uh, memorandums, uh, mm -hmm. take a look at the plans and um, then uh, bring my thoughts about those plans uh, to the board and then ask the questions. I think it's extremely important uh, as a member of the zoning board uh, and ho hopefully uh, one day the uh, city council is to ask questions. Um, that is how people find out what's truthful, what's not, well, what makes sense. And so um, I tend to ask a lot of questions and then, and then deliberate it uh, with my fellow board members, uh, see what they think and bounce that off of how I view it and, and see if this is the right project for the right area. Does it meet the standards uh, that the city council has put out uh, for our zoning ordinances? If it does, you, you pass it. If it doesn't, you deny it. And you guys are the place to be right now because all the, the retail pot shops are before you. Yes. There's, you know, you get all these different zones that you have to deal with. Yes. Some of which date back to the 50s and 60s and right. stuff like that. So um, talk about your legal background. I'm sure that helps when you're on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and it certainly would on the City Council. Um, would you go to law school, and what type of law do you practice? Yes, yeah, so I uh, went to New England Law mm -hmm. uh, in Boston. I was a uh, part-time night student while I was uh, working full-time. Um, I graduated back in uh, 2010. That's when I gained my uh, Juris Doctorate and then passed the bar. Uh, after that, I, I just opened up my own practice. Um, I rolled the dice and I tacked up my own shingle mm -hmm. and I made, you know, I opened myself up for business and I started practicing uh, you, uh, my family law. I mm -hmm. practiced family law. I've been doing that for 10 years. Um, I've helped many uh, women, uh, men, children uh, to uh, walk them through a very difficult time in their lives, mm -hmm. um, to pr try to provide them uh, strength and, um, and uh, you know, a reasoned, uh, a reasoned leadership um, mm -hmm. to divide their assets, to protect their children, to make sure that, um, that they leave that very difficult process um, you know, as whole as they could be. I'm also an immigration attorney. So I've spent the last uh, five, six years building my immigration practice. Uh, there I deal with a lot of family petitions. Mm -hmm. So in some ways it's the opposite of my, uh, my family practice where yeah. you know, families are being torn apart in a uh, family law um, area. Uh, my immigration practice, I'm bringing families together. 
uh, whether those families are here uh, in Massachusetts or in Brockton uh, or overseas, mm -hmm. uh, to have them reunite with their families here in Massachusetts. Brockton's a lot more a, rewarding. Brockton's a popular place. I it mean, is. We, we we're immigration central, if you really think about it. Like we it's are. always been. Over right. the course of time in Brockton, it's just different. A different, different community. cultures, different yes. communities. Where back in the day it was Polish and Lithuanian and right. Irish and Italian and Jewish. Now it's Cape Verdean, it's Haitian, it's Brazilian, right. Angolan. Right. I mean, there's everything here. That's what I love about Brockton. Me because too. Brockton is diverse. My kids grew up here, went to Brockton public schools. They knew everybody, and nobody was really any different. They might have had a different name, or you might have pronounced it differently. But that's what Brockton's always right. been. Um, do you think? ethnicity enters any of this when you're running. You're running in Ward 5, okay? Um, right now, at the moment, there are at least two other candidates that I know of, and possibly a third. Um, there's been a lot of talk in Brockton about race in the campaigns. Do you, do you, see, I look at Brockton as a place where everybody's always gotten along. Right. I, don't, I don't see that there are issues right. and problems. That's my personal opinion. It's not right. the station position, just to make it clear. But um, I've been seeing it come up in some of the local races, even for city council and school committee and, and, and the mayor's race. And I'm just wondering what you think of that. Well, I, like you, I don't see it in my day to day. Um, I don't think uh, race should be an issue um, in any campaign or um, I'm a firm believer that uh, when one approaches government or one approaches our uh, criminal justice system, um, race should not be considered um, at all uh, in your petition for relief between the government or our, um, our criminal justice system. I live in a neighborhood that's changing. Mm -hmm. um, it's becoming uh, much more diverse over the last 10 years. And we're neighbors. I make it a point to uh, reach out to my neighbors, introduce myself, and develop a relationship. Um, I grew up here in Brockton, so um, I've always been exposed uh, to different communities, uh, different cultures, uh, different races, ethnicities. Um, I think Brockton has a proud tradition, as you said earlier, of welcoming mm -hmm. different people to our community. And what do we do? We take, we take different peop people of different backgrounds, we take their culture, their food, and we make it Brocktonian, we make it American. And Just bring me the food and I'm all set. Right. The food, the music, right. and, and think about it. Every person that comes, they want a job, they want a good education, right. they want safety. So you must be out already pound the pavement, I am. knocking on doors, I talking am. to people. What are you hearing? What are the issues specifically for Ward 5 or people talking about issues in Ward 5 that affect the whole city? I think the, the number one issue, um, the concern with uh, residents in Ward 5 is safety. Um, I think that's, uh, my position is that every member of Ward 5, all our residents should feel safe in their neighborhood, secure in their homes. So uh, safety is always uh, a, a number one issue for people. Um, I believe that Brockton, uh, the, our local police department, should work in cooperation with our state and federal law enforcement partners. Um, I think it's important that we uh, develop strong partnerships with the different law enforcement agencies, including our, um, our uh, district, uh, district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. um, that's, how, that's how we stay safe. We, we develop the different um, task forces uh, to target the small number of people in Brockton that are committing the vast majority of crime. Let's face it, Brockton's had a, 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 a troubled history of gang violence, mm -hmm. drug dealing, prostitution. Um, it, un, not unlike any other city our size. Yeah, we're a city. We're a city. Um, but the only way to improve is uh, to do it with partnerships with our state, local, and federal law enforcement agencies. Um, that's, that's the only way the situation is going to improve. And I would say over the last few years, three, four to five years, I've seen an improvement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people, it's funny, when I, when I go to people's neighborhoods, and I've been walking the ward uh, for the past about month and a half now, and I, and I ask them, you know, what, what's your number one concern? And they're always talking about safety. And then I say, so tell me about your neighborhood, right? Well, you know, what, what's going on right here? Oh, no, we're fine. You know, we, we got a great neighborhood. My neighbors, you know, the kids are out playing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't, uh, there, there's really no 
a lot of crime, speeders and, you know, people making noise, maybe some parties, but, um, you know, shootings or uh, gang violence in, their, in the neighborhood, you know, say they, everybody thinks it's happening somewhere else. Um, and so I think that's, in some ways, that's where our benefit, you know, people, um, people see Brockton, uh, they, it has a reputation, and I think it's hard for them to um, disassociate from that, um, from that reputation. So, you know, it's in other, there, there are other areas committing crime that they're worried about, but their neighborhood is, 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 is nice, it's secure. They're happy with what's happening, you know, out there on their front yard. So Ward 5 touches right where we're sitting. Yes, Our we building do. for cable is Ward 5. Yes. We have definitely some issues right around this area. Yes. I'm trying to address them as a, a, I'm not the owner of the business, we're a nonprofit, but we depend on volunteers. And if they don't feel safe, they're not going to come and volunteer here. Right. Okay. Do you think we have enough police? Do you think the police budget is adequate? Uh, there was just a whole debate at the city council. They cut the overtime for the police. The police argued for it. They're going to probably come back later on, look for supplemental appropriation. What do you see with the police department? Well, from my understanding, uh, we're about 20 to 25 police officers short of what the, um, you know, what, what the recommended amount is or, you know, what, what the Brockton Police Department finds to be full, you know, a full police department. So yeah. um, I, I think we're in that 2025 short. So obviously um, we need more police on the street. I think when it, when it comes to safety, I think it's clear that the individual citizen is our number one um, firewall between, you know, uh, for safety. Um, a lot of people in my uh, walks across uh, the ward, I'll ask them, so they'll say, yeah, I've, you know, there was a, uh, a loud party or there are people speeding or I see hand drug deals. Um, right. You know, there, there's a lot of that happening in the, in the, out in the wards. Um, so I asked, did, did you call the police? And they say, oh, no, you know, I don't want to bother anybody or I don't, um, they'll never get here in time, which is understandable. The, the police won't get there in time. But what, they, what it will do is, is make a record. It will, um, they log everything. Right. And so then when they're looking at their log, they can uh, maybe uh, put more patrols in areas where they get a lot of a high call volume. And then maybe the police can uh, deter, either be a visual deterrent um, against uh, drug dealing or mm -hmm. prostitution or whatever you, what's happening out in front of your house. Um, if not uh, a visual deterrent, they could they could actually come at the right time where somebody is committing those crimes and get arrested. So um, the individual citizen, I think, needs to um, step, you know, uh, step up and, and, and report the crime, and then uh, hopefully the police can take care of it after that. Relationship between the city council and the mayor. Sometimes it's been rocky. Different mayors, different people, I'm not picking on any one mayor. Um, they started out very adversarial back when the current mayor became mayor. Right. What do you see about that? You were talking about partnerships with police, you know, state, federal, local. What about partnerships between the city council and the mayor? How do you see that? You're, you're an attorney. You deal with mediation, family law, stuff yes. like that. What do you see? Well, I, I agree that uh, the, the city council does at times show hostility to the mayor. Um, just in the way they, 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 they speak, um, some of the derogatory names or um, uh, I just, you are absolutely right. We, we are all Brocktonians first. We have to work together to address the issues that face our city. Um, now, my experience as an attorney, uh, I'm, not, I'm not an ideologue. I, I'm not running for mayor, right? I don't, my, my focus is on becoming a city councilor and focusing on the job of a city councilor. Uh, I, I can work with anybody. Um, I, I have a history uh, in the Navy. I've dealt with um, people from uh, all backgrounds, all cultures. Growing up in Brockton, uh, I've also uh, you know, dealt with all backgrounds and cultures. I find myself as somebody that can speak reasonably uh, to anybody who has a good faith effort, mm -hmm. uh, good faith um, to address some issues. As an attorney, I um, have some experience with reading ordinances, um, with um, 
trying to figure out what are the facts here. You learn those facts through questioning the information holders and then uh, working with the other city councilors and, and debating uh, you know, what I believe is the proper way to go. And then through that debate, you hopefully find a reasoned, you know, a, a reasoned result or a reasoned um, um, position to move forward when I, I believe I have the ability to work with all the city councilors. I respect every single one of them. Um, I've dealt with uh, all of them through my position on the zoning board. And so uh, I've, I'm trying to build a relationship uh, with the city councilors. And I believe I, I would be a, um, you know, a member of the city council that, that, that they could uh, depend on for, for um, taking the job serious, mm -hmm. um, uh, giving 100% uh, effort, and, um, and coming to a reasoned resolution to the issues that face Brockton. You mentioned three children. Yes. Are they in the schools? So two of them. I have uh, three girls. I've uh, been blessed with uh, three daughters. Um, my oldest is at Massasoit. Okay. And then my, uh, my middle daughter will be a senior at Brockton High uh, this coming fall. And then uh, we have my, uh, my youngest daughter who's uh, entering the second grade at the Baker. So, so I have two girls in the public school system. Okay, so the city council's interaction with the schools. School committee handles the schools, but the city council handles the Budget, budget after the school gets, after, after, when it goes through the budget process. Now, granted, 80% of the money comes from the state right. and there's net school spending and all of that stuff. Right. How do you see your role with the school committee, especially with children in the school and they're all public schools, plus Massasoit is a public institution. Right. How do you see the role of the city councilor, you know, maybe to interact with your ward school committee member or, you know, when they come to you for budget time, when you hear stuff, what's your thoughts on that? Right, again, a partnership. Um, I know uh, Judy Sullivan, uh, she's the Ward 5 school committee. Um, a member, I think uh, I'd be able to work well with her and the other, other members of the school committee. Um, it's a partnership. We, 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 we have to learn what their issues are, w you know, what, what are they facing, um, what's being discussed. I think I would probably attend uh, school committee meetings to hear uh, w what issues they're facing, uh, what the superintendent has to say, um, what the different principals have to say. Um, when it comes to the budget, I mean, obviously, over the last few years, uh, we, uh, the foundation budget was uh, recalculated. I believe we lost about $10 million uh, to Brockton Public Schools. Um, I think that's, uh, honestly, I think that's a travesty. I think the, um, the new found foundation budget is unfair and unjust. I know that the uh, city council and the mayor are working with our state representatives to try to uh, renegotiate that foundation budget. And I do know that there's a, a, you know, potentially a lawsuit if those uh, negotiations uh, bear no fruit. So um, when it comes to uh, the school committee, I think, I think we need to work hand in hand. It's not them and us. You know, we're all, we should all work so together. So no city side, school side as far as you're concerned. That's, that's the current terminology. People talk about the city side and the school side. To me, my humble opinion, there's one side. Right. You keep talking about we're all Brocktonians, yeah. And some people don't get it. You know, it, to me, it's everybody's responsibility to even pay for the next generation. My kids are growing up. They're 26 and 30. But someone paid for those schools for me. Right. When my, I went in, I went through all 12 years of Brockton schools. I'm proud of it. I love Brockton High. I would never ever be doing television. We had a television studio at Brockton High. Right. So it all ties together. Um, let's just get a little bit more specific for you. Okay. Okay. You have two opponents that you know of yes. and potentially a third. Are, do you know, are you certified already? Did you turn in your signatures? No, I, I have them ready to go. Okay. I've not yet turned them in, but. Got uh, plenty of time. Yes. But, but I, I do, I, I probably got about 100 right now. Okay, so it's, it's always good to have double. Right. Because they <clears throat> sit there and if you can't read it, they cross right. it off the list. That was my you plan. You got to challenge them. I challenged them. Right. I got all my, most of my signatures. It's hard because people don't write. Right. Handwriting is a, a lost art. Right. Okay. Well, I, I make sure. But okay. why would you be a better city councilor than the people you know right now that are in the race and even potentially another one? Why, why, why are you the best person for the job? Well, because I think I have uh, the, the education. Um, I went to uh, San Diego State uh, while I was uh, in the Navy. I, uh, after I finished my, my service, 
I went to San Diego State. I gained a bachelor's degree in uh, political science. So politics, um, policy has always been a passion of mine. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not so much into the politics, but the policy. So um, I, I've, that's been a, a passion of mine my, my, my whole life. Um, additionally, um, my military experience, um, the, the leadership uh, that uh, the leadership skills uh, that I learned uh, in the military um, and my experience as an attorney um, reading the law understanding the law being able to um, wade through all of the uh, you know the, the, the thickness of the law and be able to break it down into easy understandable points <clears throat> I think uh, my experience on the, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, and before that, I actually sat on Brockton's Licensing Commission. Okay. So um, I, I do have experience dealing uh, with the different boards, uh, debating the issues with uh, the members of the board, um, questioning the, uh, the information keepers, um, and, and um, you know, just I believe that through all of those experiences, um, and also my, my character, my uh, I have uh, three girls that I'm very proud of. Um, my wife, who I, I, I love very much. Um, I, I just think that I'm now at a point in my life that um, I've developed the skill set um, that would make me an effective city councilor. And so I know uh, the, uh, the two declared uh, candidates. I believe they're both uh, really nice women. Um, but I, I just believe that um, I have the proper skill set, um, the proper temperament. Um, the, uh, the ability to speak with, um, uh, work with other people to, for a common goal. And I just believe that, that that's why I'm qualified for the position. So you're here with me individually. I'm going to give your opponents and every candidate for office an opportunity to come on and educate the public about who they are. Would you want to sit side by side with them and have a comparison and do a debate? I, I, would, I would love to do that. I, I think the, um, the voters probably deserve that mm -hmm. to, um, to have uh, all, all of the uh, declared candidates um, sit and, and speak about what their backgrounds are, what their qualifications are, what their vision is, um, and to have some back and forth uh, on those issues. So I, I'd be more than happy to uh, debate, debate the other candidates uh, for Ward 5. Okay. The current counselor, Ann Beauregard, is stepping off the Ward 5 to run for a counselor at large. Um, She's done a television show here. It's called Ward 5 and 10. It's a 10 minute show, okay. short, sweet. Would you want to communicate with your constituents in a similar way? How would you communicate with your constituents if you do get elected? Yes, um, I think uh, communication, transparency, accountability, uh, the, you know, those would be the touchstones of my, uh, my time on the city council. Um, I'm not doing this for me, I'm doing it for the residents uh, of Ward 5. So. Um, Social media is, uh, you know, that's, that's the big thing now. So I would try to uh, make myself available um, to uh, inform uh, Ward 5 citizens uh, via social media. Um, holding, um, I, I would probably hold more than quarterly uh, ward, uh, ward meetings. Um, I, I'd probably maybe uh, five to six mm -hmm. a year. I, I think um, it should be a little more often than uh, quarterly. Um, I, I was unaware of the uh, Ward 5 and 10, but, you know, if, if, if that's something that... Open invitation. Yeah, well, I, I'd be more than willing to do that. Okay. I, I think I have found speaking with the citizens of Ward 5 has been honestly one of the pleasures of my life. Um, introducing myself, talking about the issues that they find important, and um, just, just, just the back and forth. And uh, I love doing that. And I, as a Ward 5 counselor, I'd make sure that I continue informing and uh, educating and listening and getting uh, feedback from the residents of Ward 5 so that we can all work together to move Brockton forward. So before I forget, and we run out of time, I just got the five minute queue. Yep. You're probably gonna have about three more and I'm gonna take a minute. Okay. Tell the voters how they can get in touch with you, if they wanna help you, um, you know, your, your email, your phone number, website, whatever. Just talk to the voters. Um, you can reach me through my uh, email. Uh, that's probably the best way to reach me right now. It's jeff.thompson98 at yahoo.com. Um, 
I think email is the e easiest way because it's, uh, I'm, I'm available all the time via email. Um, it's, it, it gives me the opportunity to uh, think about uh, you know, how I want to respond. And so uh, email, I believe, is uh, the most effective way to reach me. I do have a Facebook page. Um, I th think it's uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Thompson Ward 5 Brockton. Uh, I think that's the uh, tagline on Facebook. And uh, I believe those are the two ways to contact okay. me at this moment. And if they leave the number, you'll call them back. Of course. Because you'll get a ward counselor gets the calls. There are counselors at large that represent the whole city. They get calls too, right. but I remember back in the day there was a certain counselor at large that used to say, um, I'll give you your ward counselor's number and he or she can help you. They are, the way I look at it is I have five counselors. Yes. I have my ward counselor and four counselors at large. I agree. So I call any of them when I have an issue. Yes. But And you, you do work as a partnership, like you are talking about with uh, your school committee member. Right. And there were, there were citywide meetings where the whole council, the whole school committee, I'm on Southeastern, we all got together right. with the mayor and everybody. So right. um, what about um, public participation? What would you do to encourage your residents of Ward 5 to get more involved, to talk to you, to ask you questions? You know, it, it, it usually people call somebody when they have a problem. Right. What would you do to get more people engaged? Well, you know, it's funny. I've, I've had this conversation before. I, I think our country, and, and, and let's just go locally to our city, I think we're losing our interest in civic organizations. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm a member of Brockton's VFW. Mm -hmm. So uh, I get to meet my neighbors, uh, speak with uh, fellow uh, veterans uh, in Brockton. But I know, you know, the, the Masons and um, the Rotary Club and the Lions and, you know, those used to be big organizations, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, we're losing that. So I think number one is uh, I, I, I would hope there would be a reinvigoration or a, a refinding of our local civic organizations. I think uh, uh, communities become stronger. Their bonds become stronger when you know your neighbors through these, through these civic organizations. I also believe that the uh, neighborhood watch organizations, mm -hmm. I believe that is, is, is vital. Um, that is a, uh, a local, you know, precinct level or even street level right. organization um, that people can come to, uh, that they can discuss issues. And, uh, you know, safety issues, obviously, where you can bring in the police, uh, district attorney's office to, to discuss, uh, you know, what's facing that specific neighborhood. But it also allows you an opportunity to meet your neighbors. So I just think that um, through our civic organizations, whether that be um, the ones I mentioned or our churches, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think we, we we're kind of losing some of that bonds that are formed through those organizations. So I'm hoping that there could be a reinvigoration uh, of that. And then now when you have stronger community bonds, um, people uh, have experience and, and are more free to discuss what their issues are. Now I can, I can attend a, uh, a localized meeting with, with, with the Ward 5 residents. Um, and, and discuss the issues with them. Told you we were going to run out of time. Okay. We'll have you back. Keep us posted how it's going on the campaign okay. trail. This was the first, hopefully, of many. We want to get everybody out there and everybody educated. I so appreciate nice the opportunity. You. Thanks for coming Thank on. And I will point out you contacted me. Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're watching Thank Candidates you. Corner. Mark Lindy, your host. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, campaign election coverage, letting people know who the candidates are, why they're running, and why you should actively participate and vote. Thanks for joining us.